it wasn't if it was a bluff, it was a nice bluff, that's for sure. If it was a bluff, it was a nice bluff. That is correct. That much that much is on your side. I would also agree with that. I think the whole table agrees. In this hand for PokerNews.com, we are taking a look at a wild spot from the final table of Game of Gold. Make sure you check it out on YouTube if you have not already. The entire season is amazing. This is a winner-take-all final table, so all we care about is accumulating all the chips. In this hand, Fader Holtz playing about 108 big blinds deep, raises it up under the gun with pocket queens. Over around to Kaina in the cutoff with about 22 big blinds. In GTO world with no pound implications, both calling and going all in are very reasonable options, and she does opt to rip it in. I think that's definitely the right play, especially if you pl are playing against one of the best players in the world, Fader Holtz, and the rest of the very tough players at this table. As your opponents are better and better and better, especially compared to you, you should usually err towards taking the aggressive action. So, great shove by Kaina. Over on to Maria Ho. In the small blind, out of position. She covers Fedor. She has ace-king offsuit. Let's see what she does. How much is it? Maria opts to call in this situation, and I think that's reasonable. However, I think I probably would have just ripped it all in. I realize 108 big blinds is a lot to put all in with any hand, but her problem here is that if she does get an ace or a king, presuming Fedor called preflop, and Fedor does have something like a pocket pair, which is what he's going to have a lot of the time when he does call the 22 big blind all in, she's gonna have a hard time getting paid, right? Because imagine Fedor does have, well, exactly what he has, pocket queens, and the flop comes ace, seven, three, and Maria bets anything. Well, he's probably just gonna fold. Or if she checks, he's just gonna check behind and not put in any more money. Maybe puts in a tiny bit more, but not a lot. So I think this is a spot where Maria can go all in and get Fedor to fold a lot of medium pocket pairs. And, you know, while she will get him to fold out stuff like ace, queen, ace, jack, etc., those might just fold to the 22 big blind all in anyway. So... I think from out of position, Maria probably should have just ripped it in, but calling certainly better than folding. Now, let's see what Fedor does with the queens. Fedor. I'm five million behind. Thank you. Fedor is also in a very rough spot because Maria must have something very good to call the 22 big blind all in. Now, if he thinks Maria is going to call 22 big blinds with stuff like ace jack, ace 10 suited, pocket eights, etc., then I think going all in is pretty reasonable because you can get all of those hands that have some equity to just fold out immediately. If he's very concerned that she has a lot of traps with pocket aces and pocket kings in her range, though, then calling makes a whole lot more sense. As you think Maria's going to be trapping more and more and more with aces and kings, you should be way less inclined to shove. I mean, I suppose if you think her range is exactly aces and kings, then you can just fold, but I don't think that's going to be the case in pretty much any scenario against any good, strong, world-class opponent like Maria. So, Peter opts to call. I think think in this spot, I probably would have ripped it in, but ugh, it's a dicey spot for sure. And perhaps Fedor thinks he has a big post-flop advantage over his opponents in general. And if that's the case, he wants to minimize the chance he goes broke and calling in position with Queens probably does that. All right, let's head to the flop.
600. The flop comes. Queen, Jack, eight. All diamonds. Kaina is drawing kind of dead. She's down to less than 1% equity. And in the spot, Maria has the ace high flush draw and two over cards and a gut shot straight draw. It's pretty good. Fader Holtz has the top set. Maria opts to check, which I think is fine. She probably does not want to bet and get raised. That said, I think betting small in this scenario is very reasonable because if you do bet and get raised, you're just not folding. She checks though. Over round to Fedor, and I think Fedor gets a little bit greedy in this spot. The pot is 4.8 million, and Fedor decides to bet 600K. Tiny, tiny, tiny. While you should very often bet tiny when there are three of the same suit on the flop, I think in this situation, he probably wants to bet just a little bit bigger because a lot of Maria's range is going to be hands containing an ace or a king of diamonds, right? Either pocket aces or pocket kings, often with a diamond, or ace king, often with a diamond. Now, if you do think Maria has specifically a hand like aces or kings without a diamond, or ace king without a diamond, then the small bet makes a whole lot of sense. But I don't think there's any logical way for Fedor to know that. So I think he probably should bet just a little bit bigger, like 1.2 million, and then look to shove all in on the turn for a bet much smaller than the size of the pot. That said, he goes 600K. I'm going to presume he's right. Let's see how Maria responds. This is another really tricky spot for Maria because it's quite easy in this situation for Fedor to have pocket queens or pocket jacks or pocket aces or pocket kings. So if you think his range is very strong as it should be, I suppose shoving doesn't make a lot of sense. In general though, when you do have a very high equity draw like the nut flush draw with a gut shot and over cards, it's never that bad just to blast because if your opponent ever does make a big fold with a hand that is crushing you like pocket kings, maybe Fedor decides to bet small with ace queen or maybe even pocket tens although i'm not sure about pocket tens wanting to bet in the spot if he is going to be folding out stuff like that then that's a pretty great success so i probably would have just taken the maximum variance line in this scenario and put in a raise but calling certainly fine too let's see what the turn brings The turn is the two of hearts. Maria checks over to Fedor. He opts to bet 1.35 million out of his 4.5 million stack into the 6 million pot. And look, I would have much preferred to be in the situation where I bet a little bit bigger on the flop so then I can just jam turn for something like half pot. But because Fedor bet so small on the flop, now a turn bet would be not necessarily an over bet, 4.5 million into six, but it is starting to get a little big. And the problem is, is when you bet very, very big, your opponent's going to start folding out a whole lot of hands that you don't mind action from. However, in the spot, again, if Maria's range contains a whole lot of ace or king of diamonds, you don't really want to give her adequate odds to call, and Fedor certainly is. So I think if I found my spot in Fedor's shoes on the turn, I would have just ripped it in. That said, he goes for the small bet. Let's see how Maria responds again. Again, a very weird spot, certainly a tough scenario. Folding is out of the question. Some people think, oh, I just have ace high on the turn. I'm facing a bet. I guess I should fold. But notice in this scenario, she is against a set and she still has 29% equity. You can't go around folding whenever you have 29% equity, worst case scenario. So she's got to continue. The question is, is should she call or shove? I think once Fedor bets the flop and the turn, his range should be pretty strong here, like over pairs, sets, Maybe ace-queen. Ace-queen may not even fold at this point if you shove because then Fedor will be getting very good odds. So 
I think this is a spot where calling and just trying to get there is her only option. And that's what she does. Let's head to the river. The river is a gen card from Maria the 10. She makes it straight, but the board is now very, very coordinated. So what should she do? Should she check and call whatever Fedor bets? Should she check and raise slash put Fedor all in if he bets? Or should she lead out for 1.8 million? Or should she lead out and put Fedor all in? Take a second, think about it, and let me know what you think Maria should do in the comment section down below. And while you're there, click the like and subscribe button. One point eight million. After a bit of thought, Maria makes a very interesting bet of one point eight million out of Fedor's three point two million stack. Perhaps she thinks in this scenario that he's going to find a whole lot of hero calls if she does not. Put him all in? Who knows? Let's see what Fedor does. Uh, so we have his king of bands, pocket nines, nine of band. Seems absurd. Seems absurd to call the turn. Okay, pocket jacks, pocket tens, and not bluff. His jack off, he called down card pre. His jack suited you full turn. Full flop is the best. Ace queen is only one combo with ace of diamonds, but she would be bluffing. So one combo. Ace king is one combo with ace king of diamonds, which you might call in for. Hook with nines, nine of them. If you call this twice, then it's oh, there's no, there's no value. Before we see what Fader does, we hear him talking through this nasty spot. And long story short, it's hard to find bluffs. You need Maria to be bluffing with something like. Ace Queen, Ace of Diamonds. Maybe if she has Ace Jack offsuit, decided to play it this way with the Ace of Diamonds, maybe she decides to bluff that. She's probably not gonna turn a set into the bluff. She probably doesn't have hands like Jack 10 to turn into a bluff. So this is a scenario where it's hard for your opponent to have any value hands, but it's also equally hard, if not close to impossible for them to have bluffs. Fedor's problem is he's getting amazing pot odds. Pretty much anyone who's played a ton of online poker recognizes that pot odds exist. And this is a spot where he just does not need to win all that often to justify calling. So here the real question is, is, is Maria going to do something absurd some small fraction of the time? And as nasty as it is, I think the answer is just no. And I think Fedor kind of came to the same conclusion that the answer is no. That said, that said, let's see if you can fold a set. I know I certainly don't like folding sets. What an absurd hand. Just have nines, nine of diamonds. Like this. It's a crazy hand. Moving the river with nines is not it's wild, too. Oh, it's just. Just the ace king. The only hand. Ace king, nines. Ace ten, I can't have. Yes, it's one combo, two combos, four combos. Straight. I think she has it. Yes. Oh. What the s***? I'm gonna will the hearts, but it came all diamonds and I laughed. <laughs> Did you get out? Hey. Good luck, guys.
Fedor makes the call. He's shown the bad news, and Maria scoops a humongous pot on the way, spoiler alert, to her winning the Game of Gold title. That's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, again, click the like and subscribe button down below. Click the notification bell. We have a lot more great Game of Gold content coming out in the near future for you. Thanks to them for letting us use their footage. Good luck in your games. Have fun. And when you have a bluff catcher, even if you're getting good odds, if your opponent has no bluffs in their range, you got to let it go.